everybody, it's Rhonda here from Nelson Soapery. Today we're going to do something different. We're actually going to be making some bubble bath bombs. So instead of them fizzing and doing all that, they will just give a massive, massive puff of foam, which is really, really fun, isn't it? So to start with, what we've got here is we're just going to be putting a little bit of mica in each one. And as I've said, you know, this is a foaming one. It is not a spinning one. So a little different. And you can see on the end of the spoon, one of them is glittery so when it gives you that big puff it will have that really glitter mica so you do need a mica that is sort of glittery and I'm getting these from Sud Off. Then I'm using some Coco Betaine. It does have a longer name, which I will actually pop it down in the description. And I've also got this one here from Sud Off. So I'm actually putting in uh, about three quarters of a tablespoon of the Coco Betaine. And then in each of these, I do have my bicarbonate soda, which is one kilo of bicarb. To make sure it all mixes really, really well, we're just going to blend this for about 10 minutes in our stand mixer. You can do this by hand, of course. But as I said, for the starters, all we really have is those couple um, little things in here, and then we will add some more ingredients as we go. I'm doing two of exactly the same. So one is going to be in this really light sort of um, color, and then the second one's going to be into uh, a different color, of course. So I also have three quarters of a tablespoon of polysorbate 80 because we need to disperse the micas. And then this is basically very, very similar to my bath bomb recipe. I'm just adding in all of the extra little bits that we need in here as well. So I have three quarters of a tablespoon of jojoba oil. And I'm also going to be putting in two tablespoons of my carrier oil. My carrier oil here is um you know sweet um you can use sweet almond oil but sorry mine isn't sweet almond oil i've used um apricot kernel oil but you can choose whatever you like the lighter the oil definitely the better they will turn out because they will be lighter and the foam will just push to the top of the bath when you release them so like i said all of this is popped inside and now we're just going to keep mixing it to make sure it turns out beautiful don't forget to add in your fragrance oil of course so I'm going to be adding in an orange patchouli into this one here, which is my own mix. Um, and then we're just going to be mixing this together just to make sure it's really well combined. So now I have totally finished this and all I'm going to do is just make sure I mix it all in and make sure everything's really well combined. Don't forget to add in your cream of tartar and kaolin clay, which I forgot to say that, but there is one tablespoon of kaolin clay and there is two flat tablespoons of cream of tartar in this. You need that to keep it um, hard and because this is a bubble one, it's not going to be as hard as your normal bath bomb, but it still should be quite hard. So um, like I said, you know, we're just going to make sure we do all of this bit and then we're going to be popping it um, to the side and we're going to be popping it into a container so that we can also mix it by hand, just making sure that everything is combined really, really well. And as you can see, I pull up the uh, mixer top several times and then I remix and remix. I probably do this about five times. So hopefully that kind of explains that bit. And now we're on to the second batch. So basically you're going to do exactly the same thing, but you're going to be doing the second batch. I'm using um, this one here. And um, so what I'm actually doing actually in this one here is I'm using a saffron orange just to give a two kind of orange look as well. And I don't think I actually said in the first one, but also make sure you've got your citric acid. So in this, um, my citric acid, I have 480 grams of citric acid. So um, as I said, it's a smaller recipe. So you could even just do one half and not have to do the other half if you want. But I've just separated my large mix into two just so that we can get two colors and it's nice and easy. If you're lucky enough to have two or three stand mixes, you could do it at the same time. It'd be much easier easier because do remember that bath bombs have um, a time that you need to make them they can't be sitting there for an hour or they'll go hard and they'll go dry so you do need to um, be you know making your mix and then trying to get them all done within a 20 minute period but for this one here we're going to mix it all up we're going to make it absolutely gorgeous and then like I said we will be using the second batch I know I don't have gloves as well but this is only a test batch this is not going to be sold for anybody at all 
this won't be on the website the one that goes on my website will be the new one that goes on there it definitely won't be um this one so um because you always got to test everything as well and i just you know i changed my recipe a tiny bit from my original one so i thought let's just pop this on we'll test it we'll see how it goes but do remember in your environment it may not work perfect you may have to slightly alter the recipe because you know dry um areas you know in comparison to tropical areas or really wet areas they will need different recipes so wherever you live you can use the base recipe i give you and then you may need to tweak it just to suit um your area because some people will have humidity of 80 degrees others will have humidity of 30. so that really does play a big part in having successful bath bombs and as many many people know a successful bath bomb does not happen in 10 seconds it does take months and months of trial testing and lots of frustration to get to the end and make these absolutely beautiful and i thought i would also add because lots of people do ask me you know how many will this make this will make between 20 to 22 bath bombs um i measure mine to be roughly 130 grams per bath bomb so it will make about 22 bath bombs of that um, but do remember it depends on your process too how many you're going to make because if you're going to be using ha handheld uh, molds you've got to squeeze them together so you're going to lose a bit of that mixture um, as well hopefully that makes sense now we've done all that so let's go and pop these into individual um, hand containers and we're going to hand press them as well so just so that we get all the color making it gorgeous I wanted to make sure to tell you as well that this process of mixing it into separate bowls as I do here is really really important because this will actually just create that gorgeous color and I know the bath is not going to end up colors because we're using mica mica will only give the smallest amount of a creamy sort of color into your bath but not everybody wants bright bright colors in the bath so these ones are not going to be bright colors just the outside of the bath bomb will be but to be really honest with you you need the outside to be colorful too because people will be attracted to the outside of that so I've got my humidity here just to show you mine is sitting at 37 and the degrees is roughly 22.9 in the room so you know it's really important to have one of those little humidity um, things as well so that you can see so now I'm getting everything organized here I'm using the express bath bomb little molds that I just showed you and they are a three piece so you have the top the bottom and then you will have the shaft and so what you do is put one piece inside the shaft then you just slowly add all of your powdered mixture pop the top on and squeeze it together it's really quite simple but when I first started I actually didn't know how to use them so that's a funny one isn't it so now all I'm going to do is add about four to five sprays of witch hazel. Um, for anyone asking, water does not do the same thing as witch hazel. It definitely does not. So I really, really suggest you use witch hazel rather than water because witch hazel is plant-based. Um, and what actually happens is obviously a plant is sucking up the water from the earth, but it also does have other elements and some, you know, really, really nice things in witch hazel. So, and it does have a nicer smell as well than water so i definitely suggest that you use that i've tried all of these with just water and they're always a fail so um i definitely suggest witch hazel and also when i started making bath bombs i used water because i thought well surely it's the same and all of them were a fail so um i never ever got to succeed with just water so hopefully that helps people that are thinking why isn't there succeeding when they're using water but there's different things that you need to just try with bath bombs so now you can see they're holding in my hand they're holding really well and now we're going to um get going i definitely think that i needed to add a little bit um less of the water or witch hazel in one of them and if you ever make a mistake and you think oh look it's too wet either you can just keep turning it in your hands and the air will dry it out a bit or you can just add another quarter of a cup of bicarbonate soda and that's usually what i do and it usually does fix the trick and you don't need to panic at all so you can save mixtures if you've added too much water in them so please don't worry too much about that 
and now all I'm going to be doing is using one part of the cup which is the top and then I just literally pour tops and bottoms in and then I put it on my scale which is to the side here I weigh it up and I'm just going to take some of it off just to make sure that mine are the same all of my bath bums get weighed so I do weigh all of them um, and it's really really important that you weigh it even for your testing you still want them weighed and the right um, weights because you know if one of them is 160 grams and one's 130 well you may get different results and the results need to be with the same mixture um, the same batch and so on that's um, how you actually test things by using the same batch um, and the same sizes so as you can see it's all here and the little line in the middle is going to be our satin ring if you don't want a satin ring just don't fill it up as much give it a tap with a fork a spoon a ruler it doesn't matter what you give it a tap with but you'll notice i never ever tap the top if you tap the top it can actually crush it so that's why i never do that and they release really easy and you can see how cute this one looks so I'm going to get going with the rest of these and then we are going to do a few little tests and at the end of the video I will show you what it looks like and you will notice 100% it is nowhere near um, a bath bomb. It doesn't do all the fizzing and everything. This one is simply going to add huge bubbles into the bath and really that's what we want, isn't it? We just want it to be a bit of fun and um, we'll add that little element to, you know, our little... um our new creation so always try and make new creations there's nothing wrong with making them they don't work you know okay i've tried it now i'll maybe think of something else so all i'm doing is just using something to push them through you might have a tool i do have one i just can't find where it is and then i'm just going to be undoing them all and here's another one showing you how sweet they look and you can see now why I've used the two colors because it just adds a real bit of difference it adds a real fun part to um, the bath bombs as well which I do really really like as well make sure you're not packing any bath bombs or any bubble bath bombs anything like that too tight if you pack them too tight they'll be really heavy they'll just sink to the bottom of the bath and they won't do their thing it's also important to make sure that you're using the same oils I'm using if you want the same results because some oils are much heavier, some oils are much lighter. So a hemp oil is a much heavier um, oil, same as shea butter, coconut oil. If you're using any of those, they're really heavy and usually the bath bombs will sink and they won't fizz and spin. Um, and all my typical bath bombs do spin. And um, But like I said, this one is a bit different. It's not going to spin. It's going to foam. So remember that, that like I said, it's not going to be... Um you know your big fizz and the reason i'm actually adding citric acid in this you do need to add citric acid because a lot of you are probably thinking well if it's not spinning why add it well citric acid is a little bit heavier and grainier so what it actually does is add bulk to the bath bomb as well it helps the bicarb and everything stick together and hold really well so that's why i put it in that and then it will actually force the bubbles to the top of the bath to add a real foam and fun as well so that's why i'm adding my citric acid acid so here we are again i thought i would just show you another one while i'm making these as well and this one i'm going to be adding in a rainbow embed so if you want to add embeds you can do that and it'll give a puff of color as well just pop in a couple of different ones in here and see how you go and um, it's so much fun and if you want to actually make your own embeds go back on some of my videos because i do have some embed videos on how to make them and they are really really simple you'll never want to buy them again after you make them because honestly they're just so so easy you must use water soluble dyes you can't use micas or they will not work um, because micas don't add the puff of color so here we go look how cute they are all done again and one thing i have to tell everybody when you're using water soluble dyes it's important to remember that they don't hold their color forever it goes quite fast so anyway here at the end we're done i hope you love them they're looking gorgeous so here at the end of the video everyone i decided to do a little bit of a test to show you how they worked now the important thing to remember is i've used mica and not color so you're not going to see lots of color and you'll be able to see here how it doesn't spin as much as a bath bomb and that's because 
we actually have the cocoa betaine in it the same as if you use slsa it will actually slow down the spin which is kind of what you want in a way i had to refill it up it definitely keeps um spinning the way it should and obviously i've just put this in a sink for a bit of a tester so that we can see exactly what happens if you do use water soluble dyes the water would come out but there is a bit of a trick with using mica if you use the mica the really good thing about using mica is because it doesn't color the bath the rainbow embed that i have inside um, these particular ones will slowly come out and if you watch further to the end i do bring it back and you will definitely be able to see that the mica um, and the embeds uh, will come out so you'll see the color the embeds that are popped inside are not mica they are made with water soluble dyes and then that will give the rainbow effect so here coming up is what it will look like in the end here is the colors and you can see it's slowly still doing its job it's not fizzing it is foaming and that's what you want the top of the bath will be the foam like this and the really good thing that i do love about this is it took about five minutes or so um, for the bath bomb to finish and that's only a small 130 gram um, bath bomb anyway hopefully you've loved this and thank you to all of my patreons who are here at the end anyway see you next time everyone bye for now